Saturday, uh, December 31st, 2016, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, this is a summary of the uh, January 2017 WebBot report, or ALTA report, which actually means Asymmetric Linguistic Trends Analysis. And it's a report compiled by uh, Cliff High of Half Past Human. And uh, before I begin, I like to talk about what uh, you know the WebBot report is and the technology. I know a lot of you know what it is already, but we always get new viewers, and I think it's just fair to uh, clarify you know what it really is. Um, so I'll, I'll hear, I'll read here about predictive linguistics and our methods, according to Cliff High. He says, predictive linguistics is the process of using computer software to aggregate vast amounts of written text from the internet by categories delineated by emotional content of the words. Predictive linguistics uses emotional qualifiers and quantifiers expressed as numeric values. For each and all words, phrases discovered, filtered in the aggregation process. And he goes on to say, over 80% of all the words gathered will be discarded for one or more reasons. And uh, he also says, predictive linguistics works to predict future language about perhaps future events. So, you know, he's not a prophet, Cliff High. He's trying to forecast interpreting the data uh, due to the nature of humans. It is my operating assumption, that means Cliff High's assumption, that all humans are psychic, though the vast majority do not cultivate it as a skill and are likely unaware of it themselves. In spite of this, universe and human nature has it that they leak prescient information out continuously in their choice of language. And he goes on to say, uh, my software processing collects these leaks and aggregates, aggregates them against a model of a timeline that information is provided in this report. So let's go ahead now and... Uh, start uh, with the summary of the actual report. And the title of uh, the report, which I recommend people uh, purchase for $15, it's a, that's what it costs a monthly report. It's almost 50 pages, so it's almost like a small book. The title for the this report is Sci-Fi World, and it's forecast for December 2016 through 2046. So a lot of these forecasts are very long-term forecasts. They, they don't happen, uh, you know, right away. So let's start out with uh, what he calls um, metadata, right? And he says that the metadata of the last two reports is pointing to a sci-fi world. And he goes on to say, that the this metadata has been showing in data since 1998, um, but it's really kind of uh, grown in the last few months, the data. And he says, Half Past Human has confidence in forecasts in spite of the fantastic and sci-fi quality of much of the info coming through our processing. So... Uh, Let's hear. Yeah, he goes on to say, at a metadata layer, basically slicing data out of all the entities around a common theme, such as security or secrets, the sci-fi world has been just erupting out of our data uh, these last two reports. The new data sets began accruing in late 2015 for significant uh, change in what we call, can call the operational paradigm for humanity without actually hinting as to what direction we would be taking. So, and he goes on to say, over the course of 2016, uh, especially from April onward, the data sets have been slowly at first and then faster as the year progressed, settling in supporting position of our descriptor sci-fi world. 
So uh, that's the uh, metadata. Uh, now he moves on to world changes or Terra as he calls uh, world change. He says long-term data showing uh, ice age running from about 2025 through to 2047. Uh, it says increasing se seismic activity uh, to, to, to planet in 2017 will result in visibly apparent changes in landforms and the coastline uh, and in coastline alterations. It says there's a reference to Port of London being affected by waterfalls, maybe something with the Thames. Uh, problems from global sh for global shipping. Uh, data like uh, trapped ships in mud and uh, let's see here uh, what else uh, yeah he goes on to say uh, yet more data within the Terra entity is forecasting expressed or manifesting ice age and its symptoms are going to intrude on human awareness over 2017 and 2018, these sets have the ice age as a cause or prompt for old person's diaspora in 2018-2019. He goes on to say, and I quote, the warmists or those persons pursuing a climate warming agenda are showing up as being in crisis as the cold climate change symptoms, symptoms are described as slamming into their plans. So that's quite interesting. Uh, now we go into uh, the global pop and the changes within global population. The main thing he says, the U.S. dollar world, uh, which is the Western world that uses fiat money, I guess, you know, the developed world, is, will be upside down and inside out over 2017. It says data showing first few days following January 8th, 2017, are going to be uh, initiation for chaos in global markets will be blamed on pending power shift in USA pop. I guess that's the uh, they're going to blame the incoming uh, new administration in the US maybe. And it says problem will be really origin will really originate from in Europe through the derivatives market and counterparty risk. Something I've spoken about before as well. Uh, so we move now to uh, India subcontinent theater, pop war, India pop. Basically, uh, he's saying here, and I quote, the data are showing that by the end of March, it will be acknowledged that the India pop is in revolt with new power centers being created away from official them. The forecasts are a very rough year or years for India pop as the war against cash, gold, and populism escalates and India pop responds. So more and more trouble concerning you know, the monetary uh, crisis in India, you know, the demonetization demonetize, demonetize, we saw in November that's apparently is going to continue and the public are going to get very angry according to the web bot report. Uh, what else here? Uh, there's another one uh, for the UK UK pop. It's called, it's called Pop War, UK Block War. Basically saying uh, there's going to be clashing communi communities and religious war. And he goes on to say the UK Block War is described as sparking uh, over a pending incident between migrants, established residents, also immigrants, and local police. The details are suggesting that the established community members will become embroiled in a fist fight with smuggled migrants that will draw local police attention. So that's the UK pop. There's not much more for the UK pop in this publication uh, for this month. Australia pop is very long, and uh, so I recommend people who are interested in the Australia pop, really, if you can, buy the report. I can't really go through all of it, but I'll read the most... Uh, uh, the ones that I think are most important. And it says here, there are many new sets for the Australia pop that are describing the role it will be playing in the Antarctica wealth boom. 
These sets are showing that huge levels of investment will be made in Australia as the Antarctica discovery becomes open knowledge and the corporations begin to stage for the boom. Um, let's see. He touches upon the Australian banking system, says Australian banking system is popping up as being a developing hotspot in the February currencies uh, storms that are more general in theme in global pop where e wherever the dollar has sway over local currencies. The th thing to note about hotspots in animals or banking systems is that they represent energy blockages and once scratched thereafter require continuous scratching until the nerves are exhausted. So what else? He goes on to say the longer term sets for a monetary currency base coming out of Australia pops, pop sets are still building supporting sets for a temporal marker of a secret revealed in the meaning of some as yet undiscovered silver and other metals in what is being described as a curious vein uh, that further is forecast as being discovered through a landslip. So quite interesting there for Australia. Let's see. Uh, real estate. Australia real estate crisis is showing as moving into political instability as the corruption scandals escalate and dirty details come out involving banks. So now we go to Canada Pop. Canada Pop, let's see here. Yeah, Canada Pop basically talks about flexible mineral. He says the flexible mineral discovery language is now becoming dominated by immediacy data. So uh, indicating that 2017 is a likely year for the find, if not the announcements about it. And it says the data has the Canadian government being absolutely giddy about the discovery of these flexible minerals. Their reason for showing such will be put down to economic boost. So some kind of new metal mineral discovery in, in Canada. So uh, let's go uh, to the Italy pop. Um, yeah, uh, more and more data about banking failures. And he says here, the continuing failure of the Italian banks is forecast to lead to the failure of the Italian banking system as we move into 2017. Um, it says failure of the banking system is being very rapidly visible in late 2017 in the midst of both nasty winter and earthquakes in Italy. Uh, not great news for Italy. Uh, now the USA pop is pages long, so I'm going to take out a couple of parts that I think are quite significant. Um, he says, it is official, not only in our data, but within the larger mass of the internet spew. It is now quite clear that a very large awakening wave has indeed passed through the Western dollar slave populations. This awakening wave is just starting to manifest according to our data and will continue for at least the next decade. This is being forecast as there will be a national effort for some years from now to recall and replace all the propaganda scoop text here in USA Pop. So um, that's quite interesting. An awakening of the USA Pop. So, and he goes on to say, the data has USA Pop describing 2017 as both intense and disruptive, even as the year is less than half completed. By summer, USA Pop is described as reeling from impacts of the burst of self-awareness that had been forced upon much of the unwilling population by the currencies crisis at a global level with specific specific focus on the personal wallet. So 
Now I'm going to move into the market entity, which is something that most of you are, are interested in. Uh, so let's have a look here. Uh, he, he says, you know, that um, since he started doing the Alta reports in 1997, that he's had data about uh, Dow 20,000 and that it would be a temporal marker for silver moving to $600 an ounce. And uh, he made, yeah, he discussed this apparently in radio interviews in the early 2000s. So he's been forecasting this. Uh, and just because silver hasn't gone to uh, 600 yet, doesn't mean he's wrong because a lot of these datas, datas come for a longer term, uh, you know, perspective. And it's still showing and we're very near uh, Dow 20,000. And according to him, that would be a temporal marker for silver. He talks a little bit about that, uh, how he talked about this in early 2000s already. So let's go deeper into this market report. He says, there are large... There are several large sets within the market entity uh, which have been in place for a number of years that are attached to both the bonds subset via mutually held subsets with the currency's crisis. The currency's crisis are described as being serial uh, and attached as pearls on a string or as peas in a pod, like next to each other. On the other hand, the bond crisis is described as originating in late 2016 to become one long, grinding, growing, growling crisis from that point forward until into early March 2018. So yeah, interest rates have started going up in the bond markets, and they might come back down a bit, but... Uh, uh, the report, uh, he's interpreting the data as saying that, you know, the crisis has started, you know, late this year. Um, and it's going to be a protect, protracted bond crisis. It's not going to happen all at once, but, you know, into March 2018. So, you know, about 18 months or so. So uh, that's uh, about the bonds. Let's have a look here. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, he goes on to say, the currency's crash has been a long-term feature of these reports with intermittent events over the years reinforcing the meme. Now we have a ballooning of the new data within these sets that show a kickoff of the currency's deflation episode to begin in about mid-February 2017 with the larger impacts coming over March and April into a fully formed global currency crisis by May 2017. That's interesting. What else have we got here? Um, oh yeah, this is more about precious metals says the market's entity has long had sets that tied together Bitcoin as it was reaching $1,000 and beyond and the price movements of the precious metals. These set, these set sets have linked Bitcoin and silver specifically for a number of years. These sets have had hundreds of temporal markers, most of which have already manifested in both sets. These sets continue to gain new supporting values for Bitcoin to be in the lead mode temporarily as precious metals will race to catch up. At that point in the movement of model space, there are linguistic connections that show gold at over $3,200. And he goes on to say, it is within these sets that we find a great... Uh, battle for control of the silver price as the data shows shows it diverging globally with premiums and delta uh, at over a hundred US dollars. Yes, that is correct, he says. The data sets are showing that there will be a global difference in the in the hand delivered 
uh, price for silver of over 100 US dollars. And he goes on to say it is at this point in the data that we get numeric prices. These prices range from $125 per ounce to over $345 US dollars. He goes on to note these prices are not all within the USA and represent the global spread forecast to develop in 2017. So what else have we got here? Um, Yeah, a, bit, a little bit about Bitcoin now. He says, and I quote, new growth in the Bitcoin sets has caused this area of the market's entity to more than double in volume of language over the last six months. New sets are continuing to describe a China pop, uh, China population that will be dedicated to getting Bitcoin. So there you go, China population dedicated to getting Bitcoin. He goes on to say, in independent sets for Bitcoin, we have some numbers that are we are labeling our strange attractors for Bitcoin. These are $888, $1,088, and $1,448. And he says, these numbers are forecast as manifesting over early 2017. Uh, and he says also, these sets have numbers for Bitcoin and RMB of 80,808 uh, RMB. It's the Chinese currency. So now on to a bit more gold. Um, he goes on to say, and I quote, the gold descriptor sets continue to grow even in the late stage processing of this report for this report these sets contain gold supporting sets that are indicating that the age of gold is just now unfolding for markets entity and humanity at many levels it goes on to say not only do we have golden as money but also we have gold and golden and many forms of shines like gold in large numbers of diverse sets it says many of these sets do have antarctica the discovery links, but the majority do not. It says in the large mass of gold references, the data would seem to be forecasting the emergence into visibility of a mental shift among global pop that will, will hereafter for decades perhaps perhaps recognize gold as money. Very interesting. So um, that's it for the market's entity. You know, there's a lot more. Uh, in the report about the markets, but uh, I feel I need to move on. I can't really read the whole thing. We, we now go into what he calls um, the space goat farts entity. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, he goes on to say, and I quote, the many, the many, many new data sets for Antarctica and what we are calling the discovery have added a great deal of supporting sets for what is being labeled as precious technology uh, with the precious word being used in a similar emotive value manner to its use in the phrase precious metals. This use of the word precious in relation to the technology is centered about and supports energy as the primary supporting sets set for precious. In these sets the data suggests that energy production and distribution in ways and means that are new to modern earth are the primary prize so i guess that's to do with the sci-fi world um something coming out of antarctica which is strange but i guess john Kerry was in antarctica uh during the u.s elections i think the the uh the head of the Russian Orthodox Church went to Antarctica. So there's something going on there. So um, continuing here, the space goat, goat, space goat farts. Uh, let's see what else he has to say. And I quote, a very large part of the space goat farts entity, something over 30% by visual say, is composed of new, new stuff sets. These new stuff sets aggregate the many new technologies, new materials, and new theories, and new math that are forecast to arise from the innovation wave 
uh, now underway through throughout humanity. So the space goat farts is more like a, the hidden agenda, maybe, of the uh, elites or something. You know, it's a bit wacky, uh, you know, uh, entity, I would say. It's to do with UFOs and new discoveries. So that's what he talks about in the space goat farts. There is, of course, a, quite a bit more uh, under this, uh, you know, entity. Um, so now we come to the uh, conclusion, you know, of his reports. And his conclusion is tainted vision clearly seen. And he goes on to say, and I quote, a vision of the future is emerging now and intensifying over this next year that is described by our data as driving humanity forward for the next few centuries. This is in spite of both the expansion of earth events and the cyclic return of ice age conditions. So I guess it's all to do with this sci-fi world you know, the world uh, moving, gonna, it's going to be big changes coming, you know, in the next uh, 10, 20 years and for the rest, you know, the next hundreds of years from all these discoveries. So quite interesting. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, I know Cliff High and the web bot uh, controversial. They don't, he doesn't get everything right. He, he says he tries to interpret the data and for, make forecasts. These forecasts are not supposed to happen today or tomorrow. Some of them are, but not all of them. Some of them have like decades of, uh, you know, wait into, you know, forecasts uh, 10, 20 years hence. Um, so, yeah. Um, and yeah, so if you enjoyed this video as well, share it far and wide. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. If you'd like to donate to my channel as well, there's some links uh, below in the description. I wish you all a happy new year and prosperous new year. And I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.